welcome back to another exciting day of Harry Potter. We are about to start chapter four, so without further ado, here we go. <coughs> chapter four, The Keeper of the Keys. Boom, they knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon, he said, where there was a crash behind them and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew they had been in a long now they knew what had been in the long thin package he had brought with them. Who's there? he shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause. Then smash. The door was hit with such force that it swung clean off its hinges and with a deafening crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden behind a long, shaggy mane of hair and a wild, tangled beard but you could just make out his eyes, glinting like black beetles under all of the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door, and fitted it easily back into the frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could ya? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran behind his mother, who was crouching, terrified, behind Uncle Vernon. Ah, uh, Harry, ah, here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. You look a little like your dad, but you've got your mum's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny, raspy noise. I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, you be quiet, Dursley, you great prune, said the giant. He reached over to the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Vernon's hands, and bent it into a knot as easily as it had been made of rubber, and threw it in the corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mouse being trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back on the Dursleys, a very happy birthday to ya. Great summer for ya. I might have said at some point, but I'm, I got something for ya. I might have sat on it at some point, but it'll taste all right. From inside a pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled out a slightly squashed box. <coughs> Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large sticky chocolate cake with happy birthday, Harry, written in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost lost on the way to his mouth. And what he said instead was, Who who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rebus Hagrid, keeper of the keys and grounds at the Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about the tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say to her summit string stronger I'd not say no to something stronger if you got it. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in it and snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when they drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire there. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light and Harry felt the warmth wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged under its weight and began talking, taking all sorts of things out of his pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chip mugs, a bottle of mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig from before making the tea. Soon, the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat juicy sausages slightly burnt from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little bit. Uncle Vernon said sharply, Don't you touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great puddin' of a du son don't need a fattening anyway. Dursley, don't worry. He passed the sausages to Harry, who was hungry. He had never tasted anything so wonderful, but he still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed, seemed about to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still really don't know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea, and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Haggard, he said. Everyone does. And like I told you, I'm a keeper of the keys at Hogwarts. 
You'll know all about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys, who shrank back in the shadows. It's them who should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought you wouldn't tell you about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did you never wonder where your parents learned at all? Oh, what? asked Harry. Oh, what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just one second. He had leaped to his feet, and in anger he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at the Dursleys, that this boy, this boy, knows nothing, nothing about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school, after all, and his marks weren't bad. <coughs> I, I know some things, he said. I can tell you, you know, how to do math and stuff. But Haggard simply waved his hand and said, about our world, I mean. Your world, my world, your parents' world. What world? Hagrid looked, looked as though he was about to explode. Dursley, he boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like a nimble wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mom or dad, he said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mom and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't even know. You don't. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are, he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. You stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell that boy about anything. A braver man than, Ver than Vernon Dursley would have qu 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 quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave him. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him? Never told him what was in the letter Dumbledore left for him? It was there. I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley, and you kept it from him all these years. Kept what from me? said Harry eagerly. Stop! I forbid you! yelled Uncle Vernon in panic. Aunt Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, go boil your heads, both of you, said Haggard. Harry, you're a wizard! There was a silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what? gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Haggard, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and sank even lower. And a thumping, good old one, I'd say. You've been trained up a bit. With mom and dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letter. Harry stretched out his hand last to take the yellowish envelope addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor on the hut, on the rock, the sea. He pointed a letter and read out loud. <coughs> Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardy. Headmaster Albus Dumbledore, Order, Order of Merlin, First Class Grand Sorcerer, Warlock Supreme, Mungwump International Confederation of Wizard. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Yours sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Headmistress. Questions exploded inside Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered, what does it mean they await my owl? Galloping Gorgons! That reminds me, said Haggard, clapping his hand on his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse. And from another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl out. A real, live, rather ruffle looking owl. A long quill and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note that Harry could read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, Given Harry this letter, taking him to buy things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. Haggard. Haggard rolled up the note and gave it to the owl, which clamped in its beak, went to the door, and threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down, as though this was as normal as anything like talking on the telephone. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. W where was I? said Haggard. But at that moment, Uncle Vernon, still ashen-faced, but looking very angry, moved into the firelight. He's not going, 
he said. Hagger grunted. <laughs> I'd like to see a great muggle try to stop him, said Harry. A what? said Harry, interested. A muggle, said Haggard. It's, it's what we call non-magic folk, you know, like them. And it's your bad luck you grew up in a family to the biggest old muggles I ever laid eyes on. We swore when we took him in, we put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. Swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry. You, you knew I'm a, I'm a wizard? Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia suddenly. Knew? Of course we knew. How could you not be? My dear, my dafted sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frog spawn, turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for who she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that. They were so proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed like she'd been wanting to say all of this for years and years. Then she met that potter at school, and they left and got married, and they had you. And of course, I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as, as abnormal. And then, if you please, she went and got herself blown up, and we got landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? Y you told me they died in a car crash. Car crash? roared Haggard, jumping up angrily at the Dursleys as they scooted back in their corner. How could a car crash kill Lillian James Potter? It's an outrage, a, scound, a scandal. Harry Potter, not knowing his own story, <coughs> when, he, when every kid in the world knew his name. But why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Haggard's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea. When Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting a hold of you, how much you didn't know. Aw, oh, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's gotta. You can't go off to Hogwarts not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. I can tell you, I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery, parts of it. He sat down stared into the fire for a few seconds and then said it begins i suppose with a person called but it's incredible you don't even know his name everyone in the world knows who well i don't like saying his name if i can help it no one does why not gulp and gargoyles harry people are still scared Blim blimney this is difficult see there was this wizard who went well well bad you know as bad as you can go. Worse, worse than worse. His name was... <laughs> Hagrid gulped, but no words came out. Could you write it down? Harry suggested. Nah, I can't spell it. All right. Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this wizard, about 20 years ago, now started looking for feller followers. Got him too, for some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power, because he was getting himself power, all right. Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare to get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things happened. He was talking. O he was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him, and he killed him horribly. One of the safest places left was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore is the only one you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare try taking the school. Not just then, anyway. Now your mom and dad, they were as good a witch and wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and, and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on the on his side before. Probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up in the village where you all was a living on Halloween ten years ago. You was just a year old. He came into your house and... And Haggard suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn. Sorry, he said, but it's that sad. Knew your mom and dad, any nicer people you couldn't find. You couldn't find them anywhere. You know who killed him. And then, and then this is the real mystery of the thing. He tried to kill you too. Wanted to make the clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just liked killing by then, but he couldn't do it. 
Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead? That was no ordinary cut. That was what you got from a powerful, evil curse when it touches you. Took care of your mom and dad in their house and even, even, but it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to, to kill him. No one except you. And he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The McKinnons, the Bones, and the Pruitts. And you was only a baby. And you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As Haggard's story came to a close, he saw again the blinding flash of the green light more clearly than he'd ever remembered before. And he remembered something else for the first time in his life. A high, cold, cruel laugh. Haggard was watching him sadly. Took ye from the ruined house myself on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you to this, this lot. Load of trash, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He almost forgotten that the Dursleys were even there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have gotten back to back his courage. He was glaring at Haggard with his fists clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I ex- accept that something, there's something strange about you. Probably nothing good a, a good beaten wouldn't have cured. And as far as all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos. No denying it. The world's better off without them, in my opinion. Ask for all they got. Get mixed up with these wizarding types. Just what I expected. Always knew they'd come into a sticky end. But at that moment, Haggard leaped up from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from his coat, pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword. He said, I'm warning you, Dursley. I'm warning you. One more word. In danger of being speared on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself against the wall, and he fell silent. That's better, said Haggard, breathing heavily, and sitting back down on the sofa, which this time sagged right down to the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask. Hundreds of them. But what happened to... Well, sorry. I mean, you you know who... Good question, Harry. Disappeared. Vanished. Same night, he tried to kill you. Makes you think. Makes you even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died, coddle swap, in my opinion. Don't know if he had enough human left in him to die. Some say he's still out there, biding his time, biding his time. But, like, I don't believe it. People who was on the side came back to ours. Some of them came out of kind trances. Don't reckon they could have done it if he was came coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Cause something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was. No one does. But something about you stumped him, all right. Haggard looked at Harry with a warmth and respect blazing in his eyes. But Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure he had he had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could he possibly be? He'd spend his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he really was a wizard, why hadn't they been turned into warty toes every time he tried to lo- tried to they tried to lock him in the cupboard? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley always been able to kick him around like a football? Haggard, he said quietly, I think you must have made a mistake. I don't think I could be a wizard. To his surprise, Haggard chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when you was scared or angry? Harry looked into the fire. Not to think about it. Every odd thing that ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him happened when Harry had been, well, upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading to go in school with a ridiculous haircut, he managed to grow it back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, he got his revenge without even realizing he was doing it. He hadn't see hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? Harry looked back at Haggard, smiling, and saw that Haggard was positively beaming at him. See, said Haggard. Harry Potter, Harry Potter, not a wizard. You wait. You'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vernon wasn't going to give in without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going? He hissed. He's going to Stonewall High School, high school, and he'll be grateful for it. I've read those letters, and he needs all sorts of rubbish, spell books and wands, and if he wants to go to your muggle school, 
muggle if he wants to oh my goodness if he wants to go a great muggle like you won't stop him growled haggard stop lily and james potter's son from going to hogwarts you're mad his name's been down ever since he was born he's off to the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the entire world Seven years there, and he won't know himself. He'll be be with youngsters of his own sort for a change. He'll be under the greatest headmaster Hogwarts ever had, Albus Dumbledore. I'm not paying for some crackpot old fool to teach him magic tricks, yelled Uncle Vernon. But he had finally gone too far. Haggard seized the umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered. Insult, Albus Dumbledore, in front of me. He brought the umbrella swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light and a sound like a firecracker. A sharp squeal, and the next second, Dudley was dancing on spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on them, Harry saw a curly pig's tail poking through the hole in his trousers. Uncle Vernon roared, pulling Aunt Petunia and Dudley into the other room. He cast one terrified look at Haggard and slammed the door behind them. Haggard looked down at his umbrella and stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost my temper, I guess, he said ruefully. But it didn't work anyway. I meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he's so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. He cast a sideways look at Harry under his bushy eyebrows. Be grateful if you didn't mention that to anyone at Hogwarts, he said. I'm, er, I'm not supposed to do magic, strictly speaking. I was allowed to do it a bit to follow you to get here with your letters and stuff. One of the reasons I was so keen to take on the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? Asked Harry. Oh, well, I was at Hogwarts myself, but I, well, I got expelled. To tell you the truth, in my third year, they snapped me one in half and everything. But Dumbledore let me stay as the gamekeeper. Great man, that Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? Oh, it's, it's getting late and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Hagrid loudly. Gotta get up to town. Gotta get your books in that. He took off his thick black coat and threw it threw it to Harry. You can nip under that, he said. Don't mind if it wiggles a bit. I think I still got a couple of dormice in the pockets. That is a really good chapter. All right, well, that concludes chapter four. We will do chapter five next, and I hope you enjoy it.